Some of the most world-changing battles and conflicts of World War II took place throughout Micronesia, the Philippine Sea, and the Mariana Islands. The people of Guam are supposed to uh, celebrate Santa Kamalin. That day there was no school. So everybody's free, everybody's free from school. We heard the uh, humming of uh, airplanes coming from the direction of over Rory Point, no way of Rory Point. And some people thought that the U.S. Navy is putting out an air show, but it is not. The distant humming was in fact Japanese planes approaching Sumai, preparing to drop bombs in the vicinity which at the time was the hub of communications for the island. The minute the break formation, they start bombing. The marine barrack went up in flame. Then the Standard Oil Company, the reserve tank, went up in huge flame and black smoke all over. Then they start bombing the Guam Cable and the Pan Am Hotel and everything around those, uh, all the resources what they, what they did is they did not knock off all the resources that Shumai had, so there would be no communication to the outside world. A week after the island was attacked, Japanese soldiers set foot on island and Guam was handed over to them by U.S. Naval Governor George McMillan. A high-ranking Japanese officer ordered that all those people staying in Rodi and Shumai must move into Hapla area. That is, that's where the, the uh, commissary now and the Navy saying stand. So we have to move in and build our uh, makeshift home, school, and third. Because the Japanese garrison occupied the whole area and the road, I mean, the whole area in Sumai and the road point. So we have to move away from Sumai. After four hours of schooling, then they put us in uh, either the uh, sweet potato plantation or rice field. I work in the rice field by rock two in agate. Anything that the Japanese rules put out, uh, we kind of uh, ignore it. They will get you and punish you by slapping you across the face or make you stand attention and kick you both legs and you have to flip over. I witnessed some beheaded in, Ta in Atang Tano. As U.S. soldiers moved closer to the island in an effort to recapture her, Japanese forces began relocating the Chamorro people from their homes to concentration camps around the island. Mr. Guzman and his family were sent to Menengen. Before we leave Hapla to the concentration camp on mid of July 1944, the rules and regulations the Japanese put out that if anybody too old and too sick to make the, the journey must be left behind. That's the last uh, time that we ever been there and many people have been suffering. We were treated like animals in, in the concentration camp. After suffering for weeks in the concentration camp, Mr. Guzman recalls the moment he encountered American soldiers. My mother sent me down to the river to scoop some water to make hot water. And I saw, I was uh, walking up to the camp. My eye caught something moving under a tree. So I tried to do regard because I thought the Japanese soldiers came back. But when another second time, I saw two guys moving under a tree. Then I turned back up and take a very good look. And I saw uh, this guy right in front, holding a rifle, with a muddy, dirty uniform. I looked it over and the guy calling me by from his finger. So I know, I already, I thought the Japanese, the Japanese are calling me. So I lit on the water, the bamboo, and I walked slowly over to him and put his finger on his lip to be quiet. So I went over and asked me, do you speak English? I said, a little bit. 
Is anybody in the camp that I can talk? Anybody in the camp that can speak good English? They could maybe I find somebody. So he gave me a candy bar for whoever I pick to show it to him or her that is a proof that the American is right here in the camp. The first person I encounter, I mean I approach in the camp, is an old lady by the name of Tan Rosario. And I try to hold her hand to come with me to whisper to her ear. But she insisted she thought I'm joking. So I, I told her in some more, I said, you have to come with me. I'm going to tell you something. Then I take out the box, the candy bar from my bag because I put it in my bag so no, no one can see it. So when I show that to her, man, She is very excited. Early in the morning, that's when we started getting walking down to uh, Tengu Vista. We go in south, I mean uh, west. And then uh, down in the Tengu Vista, that's where we met all the uh, people that are coming up from the different concentration camp in Menengu. Some were transported to Agana. People from the south were transported to Agat. When the island was liberated and Japanese forces officially surrendered Guam to America, the Chamorro people slowly began to rebuild their lives. Many people returned to their villages. However, Mr. Guzman, as well as others to my residence, were relocated to the current village of Santa Rita, where many of them still live to share their stories. Let them find more history of their ancestors, their grandparents, and their Really, they better, they better know where they really came from. It's all up to the children now to keep up their parents' story. Join us as we walk through the history of a war that changed the world 75 years ago. In the coming months, we will honor and pay tribute to those who lived and suffered through the war and those who died. We will hear stories of bravery and resilience and of the legacy that has come from it.